minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Every middle schooler's brain has made space for this formula in between all of the Skibbity Toilet and Ohio. Unfortunately, this formula only works in boring, second-degree polynomials. It's probably only taught in order to get your feet wet with deriving formulas. However, there is an entirely untapped world of weird and wacky quadratics. This is the quadratic formula. Here's how you derive it. This version tells you the value of z in this particular equation. But just like you, z can be any variable, even if it is dependent on something else. Essentially, you can apply the formula to any equation of this form. This doesn't mean you'll have to solve for yet another variable once you've used it, however. There are usually three kinds of quadratic-like equations. The first are the substitutions. Swap out the variable, and you're done. The second kind are the exponentials. Be careful about notations. Like a YouTube short student school, power towers are evaluated from top to bottom. So this is a quadratic-like, Well, this is not. The final kind are the ones you have to use some stupid-ass identity to simplify the equation. If you see a trig function, it'll probably be one of these. We'll start with the easiest one. x to the fourth is equal to x squared squared, so we can substitute that for z. Let's use factoring for this one. To do this, find p, q, r, and s, which satisfy these identities. Factoring is actually its own scale with complex techniques, but I'm not going to waste any of my time on that. Well, would you look at that? I found p, q, r, and s, which satisfy those identities. Substitute x squared for z, use the zero product property, and we're done. Like a couple of strange kinks I know you're into, x is on top here. 4 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of x squared, so the whole equation is a quadratic and 2 to the power of x. Do some low-level factoring, get rid of the exponential, and we're done. Finally, we have this thing. Don't worry, even the weirder ones can be defeated using this mysterious piece of paper that my math teacher gave me. For this one, we can use the Pythagorean identity to convert this equation into a, into a, fuck, into a quadratic of cosine of theta. You freaks over here can piss off. Normally, I'd speedrun saying the word done here, but this time I actually had to explain myself. Take a look at this circle. Now that I put this singular line here, it's now a unit circle. Each x and y coordinate on the circle correspond to the sine and cosine of this angle. Here, we're looking for any angles with a corresponding x value equal to either 1 or negative 0.8. Similar to a botched amputation, inverse trig functions won't cut it either, because our cosine only outputs in quadrants 1 and 2. However, we can use this mirror to get the other unit circle solution and find the rest of the solutions because of the infinite amount of coterminal angles of theta at theta plus a multiple of 2 pi. And we're done! Before you fact check me in the comments, Desmos has a mental disorder that prevents it from displaying this equation correctly.